morning to everyone. I am Nuria Ferrer from the Hydrogeology Group in the Technical University of Catalonia in Barcelona. In the first part of this webinar, we are going to focus on two main ideas. Firstly, we are going to present what we understand as climate change and we are going to present an example how a drop period, in this case caused by a La Niña event, a climatic phenomenon, affected an area located in East Africa in 2016. The effects of this drop period here presented can be extrapolated to other areas of the continent. Secondly, we present how these drop periods that are predicted to be more frequently and longer in the future may affect the soil water capacity and groundwater levels, two uh, variables directly related to crop production. So, to start, say that most of future scenarios predict that climate change increase mean global temperature, affect mean precipitation, and increase extreme events. Other consequences are increased number and length of drought periods. Forecast special and temporal change in mean annual rainfall are known to influence the water balance as a whole and groundwater recharge in particular. Although most of noticeable impacts of climate change are fluctuation in surface, surface water levels and quality, a very significant concern shared by water managers and government alike is the potential reduction in quantity and deteriorating quality of the groundwater supplies, as is the main available potable water supply source for human consumption and irrigated agriculture production worldwide. Apart of climate change, the climate phenomenon also affect the water balance. It means the water inflow and not flow. The Niño and La Niña are the most climate phenomena. These two are a complex weather patterns resulting from variation in the ocean temperature in the equatorial Pacific. El Niño and La Niña events occur on average every 2-7 years and last to 9-12 to 12 months. Typically, El Niño occurs more frequent than La Niña. And this variation from normal surface temperature can have a large impact not only on the ocean processes, but also on global weather and climate. The last El Niño La Niña was from 2015 to 2017, causing a drought and flood in different Africa areas. Therefore, Focusing on the drought periods that are predicted to be more frequent in the future and that will affect directly the crop failure, we present the effect of the last Niña event in East Africa in 2016-2017, where the Grow for Good project, one of the Ubre Consortium study area, is located. It says that Somalia and parts of Kenya faced a severe famine Somalia and coastal Kenya, 70% of 100% crop failure was registered. Say that Kenya usually received the majority of its rainfall during two periods. One, the long rains during April, May and June, and the short rains during October, November and December. During La Niña, parts of Kenya received poor short rains, leading to an extension of the dry lean season that usually lasts from August to October. Furthermore, the east area had also suffered poor long rains. That means intensifying the drought episode. So the causes of the La Niña drought in the coastal Kenya uh, were the recharge was reduced 69% compared to average annual rainfall. It means that the drought affected the groundwater availability, reducing the recharge. There was no any seasonality since the wet period did not take place. Furthermore, there was an increment of saline intrusion in the wells located on the coast, producing a reduction on the groundwater quality that may affect the crop irrigation 
quality water. But not all this is negative, since the wells located inland did not suffer any change on quality. So, remark that the drought periods have a double effect, on groundwater quantity, reducing it, and on groundwater quality, on those wells located near the coast. So, looking the effects of La Niña drought in the coastal Kenya, remarks the impacts of climate change on groundwater availability are profound and need to explore deeply, especially in the African region, where most of people depend on groundwater for a range of different purposes. Say that Africa is considered the most vulnerable continent to climate change, with one third of the population living in drought prone areas and with the highest rate of population increase in the world. A growing population requires more water for supply and more food, so more water is also needed to produce that food. Therefore, Agriculture productivity is a crucial component of global food security and the, therefore water scarcity and hunger are closely interrelated. Therefore, how will affect the climate change to the farmers? The climate change, focusing on the impact of the drought periods that we are talking about, we have a direct effect on the soil water storage affecting the crop water demand. Furthermore, the climate change presents an affection on the recharge that is directly related to the groundwater levels and so related to the water availability for the farmers and consumers. How does the precipitation affect the soil water storage? Firstly, explain that the soil water storage is the amount of water that can be stored in the soil and used for the crop plant growth. Therefore, if there is not enough water to fill this water soil storage, such as during a drought period, an irrigation is needed to face the soil water deficit. Looking at the plot on the right, where the soil water deficit is plotted versus the rain predicted in the future episode, shows the importance of soil water capacity in order to face soil water deficit. This plot shows that part of the rainfall volume, the type of the soil affect the soil water deficit, being more deficit in those soils with lower water values of useful soil capacity. Here we are comparing a soil water reserve of 180 versus a soil water reserve of 42. Water scarcity may produce relevant socioeconomic and environmental impacts, in particular in the dry areas of the continent, considered to be among the most altered regions in the world by different climate change scenarios. So, it is important to know the soil type and soil water storage to face the water deficit during drought periods. Furthermore, identifying limitations to photosynthesis and the regulatory processes under water deficit and salinity is essential to minimize the negative impact of such a stress on agricultural crops. To face this water deficit and maintain a high crop grain yield, more water for irrigation is needed. Once the soil water storage is full and the soil is saturated, for example during wet periods, more net recharge reach the aquifer. It means that water from the precipitation reach the groundwater aquifer. On the contrary, on the right side of the presentation, when the fill capacity of the soil is empty, for example at the end of the drop period, rain is retained in the soil until the soil moisture deficit is satisfied. So 
less recharge quantity reach the aquifer. The correlation here, we are going to present that the correlation between the rainfall and the recharge is not linear, confirming that there is no a sample direct relationship between average annual rainfall and recharge. This is because of many variables involved, principally temperature, rainfall intensity and seasonality, topography, vegetation and soil or rock type. In particular, Rainfall during intense but short storm is more effective in driving recharge compared than lower intensity, more continuous rainfall. We can see the green square versus the red square. The rainfall intensity and distribution throughout the year influence net recharge rather than the total annual volume of rainfall. Despite total volume and distribution patterns, are both complementary variables. Therefore, an intense rainfall event over 100 mm on a saturated catchment leads to an intense and significant recharge. Looking in detail at uh, different pronosticated rainfall volumes calculated from a historical rainfall setting, we see that having low rainfall volumes in a drought and very drought periods, the rainfall and the recharge volume not present a linear correlation. We have, for example, 432 millimeters and 392 millimeters the first and the second year, producing the same net recharge. On the contrary, a more recharge, 461 millimeters, is producing less recharge in the third year. Remark that we have observed that the importance of rainfall factor distribution to create effective recharge is not only relevant during years with very low rainfall, but also during those years with average volume of rainfall, see the red square. Therefore, it is important to know the rainfall pattern in each farm area in order to predict what will be the effective recharge under different climatic scenarios. We know that the recharge affect directly the groundwater levels. So if there is lower recharge volume, the groundwater level decline is higher. The groundwater level decline is not the same for all the aquifer units. Here on the plot on, on the left, we show some results of different scenarios simulating different length of drop period of a numerical model built in the study area. The groundwater decline is higher in the deep aquifer than in the shallow aquifer. However, the shallow aquifer is less resilient to phase drop periods and most, and most of the wells become dry. If there is lower rainfall due to future climatic change, the soil water deficit is higher and need to be compensated by irrigation. But lower rainfall means lower recharge, and then the groundwater level is higher. During drought periods, the groundwater level decline will be caused by the recharge re reduction plus the increment of irrigation to compensate the soil water deficit. What does it mean for the farmers? Point that shallow aquifer is less resilient to face drought events and most of the wells become dry compared to the deep aquifer since the shallow aquifer due to its properties. However, if the deep, if the deep aquifer uh, the groundwater level decline, it could be more difficult to extract groundwater. The cost of pumping groundwater increased approximately linearly with change in water table depth in groundwater feed irrigation systems, where energy cost is the main component of water price. This increased energy cost could mean an increase to crop prices. So, the message to take home. The climate change predicts more frequent and longer drought periods. 
The available water from the, for the plant crop will depend on the soil properties of the field land. Furthermore, the drought will cause a reduction of the groundwater levels in the deep aquifer that can produce an increment of the energy cost to extract groundwater for irrigation. And in the main extreme events, this uh, groundwater level reduction produce that some shallow wells become dry. Thank you for your attention. Any questions?